of the doctor is in every Tuesday. Our panel of MDs tackle questions from our studio audience about health and wellness issues. Our first question comes from a woman wondering if postponing surgery is the right thing to do. Watch. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, doctors noticed Rochelle Chase had fibroids, tumors in her uterus that, in her case, were non-cancerous. They would come back and say, oh, you know, they're continuing to grow. We'll just keep a watch. We'll just keep an eye out on them. The 45-year-old had none of the usual troubling symptoms, like pain, so doctors weren't initially concerned. It really was only about four years ago that I really started noticing them. But the fibroids grew, so now they look like this in an MRI, almost entirely filling her uterus. And it's so bad, it's starting to show on the outside, a belly bulge. I can pass it off if you're looking at me straight on, because I still have a waist. But then if you look from the side, it's like it looks like this whole seahorse thing, so I am a little bit uncomfortable with that. Without any immediate medical concerns, Rochelle has hesitated to have surgery, but she is worried that the bulky fibroid mass could be causing damage to her other organs. I guess my question is by not having surgery, what damage could I be doing to my body? Rochelle is here with us. Thank you for being here today. And also today from NYU Medical Center, we have Dr. Mark Siegel with us. And from the show, The Doctors, OBGYN, Dr. Lisa Masterson is here as well. Michelle, good to have you here. Thank you. Nice to meet you. So um, you're very concerned, obviously, about your health, and you're thinking about maybe surgery. After I saw that MRI, I mean, I was like, whoa, this is kind of shocking. Are you in pain? No, no pain at all. No pain at all? Mm -mm. Uh, mental pain, mental anguish? No, really. Okay. I don't here's even a, think about them. Here's a typical man thing to say, and I apologize. <laughs> well, it seems to me you, you would have this removed. Why well, don't you? I don't want to because I'm afraid of surgery, for one thing, but mainly because I don't have any symptoms. I mean, most of the, the stories that I've read about people whose quality of life improves, it's because they have major symptoms and pain, and I'm fine. Okay, Dr. And Masterson, what is a fibroid tumor? Because we hear the word tumor, and it's right. like, whoa. And Rochelle is not alone at all, because this is so common. I get asked about this on the street, everywhere, in my office. Mm. Um, basically, fibroid tumors are benign tumors that grow in the uterus, and basically the cells just don't know, you know, to stop, and they just keep growing. So they're not cancerous, but they can cause problems like bleeding, which can cause anemia, which can cause, you know, transfusions that are necessary, or death, that the heart can't pump and do that. It can cause pain, not pain in your instance, but they can get so large that they can cause a decreased quality of life because of the pressure. Because if you get up, if her shell gets up, you can really see from the side, this is, this is her fibroid. This is not mm. her belly. This is her fibroid right in here. What's it, right. What other organs? And that's heavy. Smash. That's heavy, and it's yeah. causing obstruction. This is you. This is you. That's the criteria you fit in. So the question is, should you do something? Yes, you should. But what should you do? And it used to be a one-size-fits-all. We used to just hysterectomy everybody. But now you have so many more options. Myomectomy, which is just the fibroids. Lots more options, and that's what you need to talk. Wait, I, agree, I agree completely I, 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 with, her, with Dr. Messon. I see a lot of women that come in with, with a blood loss and anemia. That's a big problem for me as an internist. And I want to say from the start, in the old days, doctors used to just say, do a hysterectomy. Right. That's exactly. it. We have to treat women better than that. Yeah. And... The number one procedure that's done these days, and probably Dr. Masterson will, Masterson will say not for her, but one number one procedure you can do these days is you can actually do embolization, which cuts off the blood supply to the fibroid, and it shrinks. So that's a, that's a miracle procedure that we actually use in, in, re, in regular medical practice. Why is so artery embolization, which is a great new procedure. Again, the reason why he's saying not for her, because your fibroid is very large. Right. But there's vaginal procedures. There's laparoscopic procedures. So you have to talk to your doctor to make an informed decision. That's what it's all about now, an informed decision about what to do. But it needs to be done. You know, you need to do something because your quality of life will just change. This is like carrying around a small watermelon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You think you... Well, and I, I have looked into different options, uh -huh. so it's like trying to figure out, okay, at this point, which one is the right one. We also should say to the audience that not everybody with a fibroid has to have something done. It totally depends on how many you have, what the size are, right. and how it interferes with your quality of life. In her case, it's a big issue. Okay. You're 45? Yes, right? 45. You don't want children? No. Okay. Okay. So she's perfect for a lot of different options. Women who want children, that can be a trick yeah. problem. Doctors, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. All right. So you want to get pregnant. How long do you have to be off the pill to try? The doctors have the answer when we come back. Stay with us. My guess, three months. That's a guess. I'm not a doctor.